Can I now invite, before opening to the floor, invite the three speakers to comment on each other. If anything you want to add uh, to comment on each other's uh, 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 talk, please do so now before I open to the public. Uh, uh, very quickly about, uh, is it working? Yeah. Very quickly about Malaysia. Um, Malaysia has either suspended or canceled a major infrastructure project with China. What has escaped uh, international attention so far is that at the same time, Malaysia has also either cancelled or suspended a major infrastructure project with Singapore, uh, which is this long railway connecting um, Malaysia Peninsula to the island state of um, Singapore. So there are domestic uh, financial, economic and political uh, reasons uh, as well. Um, I was in Malaysia about um, three weeks ago uh, speaking at a conference, a China conference organized by the, by the Hong Kong English newspaper, the Hong Kong South China Morning Post. Very well attended, it was a two-day two conference and they had about 700 people um, from various parts of the region. Three ministers of the Malaysian government came to speak and they were supportive of the Belt and Road Initiative. And one minister uh, said this, I mean, you, you might want to check it out because I think the South China Morning Post still carries it. Uh, this uh, uh, report on their website. And he said China doesn't have any, in their view, expansion uh, uh, ambitions, uh, territorial expansion ambitions. If China had, the Admiral, Admiral Zheng He, who had been exploring different parts of the world, and apparently he came as far as the coast of East Africa, um, in a place where it's part of Kenya today. And he said if um, China had territorial ambitions, it was they 1401. Would have, 600 years ago, they would have conquered and colonized Malaysia. But the Chinese didn't. Um, it didn't this, the Brits did. This, um, this comparison between um, how China behaved, at least in those days, and uh, how some Western countries behaved in around the same period, didn't come from me or Chinese person, uh, it came from Malaysian uh, minister. So uh, I'll just pause there, thank you. Chef? No, I just wanted to add that, look, lots of, there have been some great examples of Belt and Road projects doing well. Piraeus, the port in Greece, which was taken over in you know, 2010, it was 93rd largest port in the world. Today it's the 38th largest port in the world uh, in seven, eight years because of Chinese investment, upgradation, and support. So I think there are lots of good opportunities to engage. I think the question is, is it hegemony with consent or hegemony without consent? Hmm. And I think that's really the key question. Is it with the consent of the multilateral rules-based order with uh, global best practice, or is it a very Sinocentric strategy that we're gonna do it this way and you can be a small country, Burkina Faso, or wherever, we're going to just do it like this. I think that's the core question that underlies, I think, the success globally and acceptance of Belt and Road as a positive development project versus something that is purely serving the interests of the Chinese uh, state uh, growth. Let, let me, um, Ronnie, if I may, uh, chip in here. Uh, Hong Kong is regarded by the central authorities of China as an important and key node in the Belt and Road Initiative. One of the things that we have been um, saying to uh, Beijing, and I think we're getting some uh, traction and following, and also to enterprises, particularly construction companies that are venturing out to the Belt and Road countries, is this. Please use the, Ho the Hong Kong contracting system and the Hong Kong dispute resolution system. Yes. Better still put Hong Kong in the uh, applicable law uh, uh, part of these contracts, uh, Hong Kong. Um, so um, if we uh, do that, um, these Belt and Road uh, infrastructure contracts would be uh, drafted in Hong Kong law, which is essential English common law, and um, any dispute will be resolved accordingly. Dr. Bayou? Yeah, two points. First, I think the increasing demand for food, energy, and water in the futures will be really tremendous. And uh, maybe some of the countries uh, worry about that because they still have it, right? 
the second, I think, the second point is the trade war issues and uh, policy by other countries and put China in, in terms of uh, uh, bare eye in an upper hand. And I think that is inevitable. And uh, we uh, should discuss that more carefully on, on looking at the futures because, again, the BRI is not something for tomorrow. It is for 10, 15, 20 years from now. Very good. Thank you.